Associations may be disorganized, and time and space relationships are lost. people welcome back to the hippie speedball podcast <laughs> i'm blowing smoke in my guest face i didn't mean to it is your joe Not your host good. with the most joe and of course i'm joined by shelby over here off camera shelby how you doing i'm good Thank you're gonna you. hear a little bit more background noise because we got some friends over here hanging out we, we guys that's the audience yeah we, <laughs> we have our studio <laughs> audience over there kicking it uh, so today's going to be a little bit different episode of the podcast because I'm actually smoking this blunt by myself because my guest actually doesn't really partake and I'm actually sipping on a little whiskey instead of some coffee yeah. in the honor of St. Patty's Day. We rock in the green. Happy We're doing our thing. Day. Yes, you too. Yeah. So today my guest is a dear old friend of mine and she is actually, we've known each other since high school and we're giant movie geeks. So today on the episode, we're actually going to go through our top five stoner movies of all time. I've actually picked my top five and back when she partakes, she had a handful herself. And so she's actually going to, you know, go through her. So please give it up for JJ. Thanks for fucking coming through. Salute. Hello, man. Slotcher. And we got the studio audience. Given that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that shit. Thanks for fucking say, coming man, through, dude. Like one of those plaques or whatever. Like, all right, now laugh. I know. Now that's enough. <laughs> right. You know. Exactly. We just yeah. got like in a pause thing that lights up and then quiet on the set. You know. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would dude. be really cool. I forgot they actually did have the like lights. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. On air. All right. Mm -hmm. I believe. Oh, so what did you bring us to be drinking on today? Uh, two gingers. Two gingers? Two gingers. It's really, right actually, here. can I get some more? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, we'll just leave it out right <laughs> there on you. the table. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sipping a little whiskey in honor of the St. Patty's uh, Day. <laughs> it's smooth, malty, and slightly sweet. And I love your shirt. It's bringing me back to, like, fucking, like, middle school slash, like, freshman year. <laughs> Dude, this is, this is from my, uh brother-in-law actually oh really yeah. oh that's fucking he, awesome he was, yeah, I, I you know of all the people i didn't have a, a green shirt oh okay, okay. Uh, and i just like took this from him oh, okay there you go well hey it works there you yeah, go that's absolutely. what's up yeah. yeah and i actually didn't really have much green shirts either so today i'm actually rocking my old fucking north dakota university of north dakota hockey jersey actually it's pretty fucking go. yeah it's pretty awesome yeah what's that uh no it's all good yeah i don't know sweat it. it's all good yeah was, like <clears throat> what's last up? year for St. Patty's Day, because I don't have a green shirt, I just wore white shirts and I just wrote "This is green" on it, and it passed. <laughs> which is that's dope. awesome. I did that it's in the high power school. Of imagination. I, I did that in high school, but mine says "Pinch me and I'll kick your ass." That's what I wrote on, it, <laughs> on there. So I had to do my little middle finger thing back in the right. day. All right, so you brought the whiskey. You long hair. I got the what's I had long hair in high school very too. Long actually, hair in high school. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I had very very long hair in high school. Like it was Modern actually life. fucking down to the middle of my back. Some days I miss it, but other days I really don't because it was a lot of goddamn maintenance. I and, um, would say the shampoo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fuck that. I the mean, Garnier Fructis that you had to buy to maintain that, like. You know. <laughs> Actually, it was just fucking just shampoo and conditioner. A lot of people thought I did fancy shit with mm -hmm. it. No, it's just crazy Viking and Native American genetics that just got my hair just going like You're, it just grows straight the fuck down. <laughs> you had it going on, man. I guess so. I guess so. So yeah. you brought the whiskey. I got the blunt going. So let's go ahead and fucking dive into these fucking movies let's do it i love this shit and so uh Stop. one of the reasons i chose movies to do on this month actually is a lot of people don't know is uh you know because it's actually you know it's women's month here on the hippie speedball podcast and so the very first narrative female director actually was a female her name was alice guy blanche blanche i'm probably butchering the name she's from france she was fucking bad ass she was the first person to really take clips of film and put it together to tell a story and really control her set and one of the badass things that she used to fucking can do was actually walk around on a fucking horse and shelby made a dope ass comment actually about when we were talking about that earlier yeah that's probably where the the term get off your high horse comes from i know right i mean like that's pretty fucking savage to be fucking walking around and doing that shit so that's one of the reasons i wanted to choose movies and pay a little homage and you know you're one of my giant movie geek buddies so let's Absolutely. go ahead and jump in with our top our number fives and what's yours dude all right so i didn't put them down in any particular order yeah mine aren't really in any particular order either but i'm just um, starting but, from the you know i knew i was drinking whiskey so i know i had to write yeah, forget down. about it uh but water world is definitely gotta be mm. like <laughs> water world best. yeah that's a dope fucking choice that's yeah. awesome so yeah. why water world um 
Oh, I mean, have you seen it, man? Like, it's it's fucking great. It's like, <laughs> I was gonna say that, that is one of my favorite it's, movies as it's well. Such a good like, movie. It's, it's pretty it's fucking good. Like I haven't watched it in a like really, the, really long time. So, do you remember like the premise and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, like, I mean, a the fact that they made those sets mm-hmm. and they floated on water and they filmed entirely on water for the just that's just what they did. Yeah. Like, except Kevin Costner, you know, he was a total dick. Yeah, <laughs> because it was, it took like millions, like a lot of money, like back in the nineties, and because it honestly was kind of a flop, he had ended up putting a whole bunch of his own money into it. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So he was kind of using that as like, oh, well, I'm da, da, da. what a dick. Yeah. You're not a fucking asshole. It's like if it's, if it's a passion project, don't fucking flaunt your fucking star ability. It's, it's like so good, that's like, oh yeah, well yeah, for like, sure, it's a great fucking movie. So what what's your favorite part on that movie? And why, why do you pick, like, you know, and, like, what makes it awesome, like, when you're watching it while you're baked? Mm. There's this, the, so, for anybody who hasn't seen it, right, everything is obviously, as we were talking about, on the water. And the main guy is this kind of, like, mutiny guy. Okay. Um, mutant E, not like, mm-hmm. as in, Yeah. You know. I, I, I oddly uh, understood exactly what you meant, but it's good. I'm perfect. glad that you because, clarified because, because there's people that are just listening. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and he has this, uh, I think it's called a, a pontoon, mm-hmm. whatever, it, but it's one of those boats where there's like, it's just like two uh, long tubes with like a net in between. And then he has this really awesome sail. And there's a scene where he's like chasing after people or he's getting chased. I can't remember which, but he's like moving his pontoon in all these weird ways. And the camera angles are really, really dope because it kind of looks like they just set them all over the boat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but he's like running around and like (laughs) jumping on this and twirling it. And then the boat does something cool. And then, he you know, almost gets, you know, shot or exploded or whatever. Like, it's just like really intense. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. And so especially that's a great fucking choice. It's just like, oh. I know it just kind of just locks yeah. you in, makes uh, you look at it from a whole different light. It. Yeah, exactly. Even Hell yeah! Seen it. I know. Like, there's a lot of movies that are like that. Like one that's not on my list, but I pointed out earlier on the podcast uh, is actually um, uh, fucking Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Dude. is a really good one to watch while you're baked because I got really high one time and it was back like when I used to like smoke and try to sneak it past my mom in my room. Yeah. Like, and I used to fucking um, I actually went out there when they were watching it and I was super high and then I didn't realize all the different drug references that are fucking uh-huh. in that movie and almost every single time something happens in that movie they consume something right beforehand never even realized that like and they even before they even walk in the factory they lick the fucking paper yeah so they're all dropping acid right before they even walk in i will say though man like because i i've you know have watched that i think when you're like first doing any kind of weed anything all you want to do is like okay i need to watch all that old shit for when i was a kid that was super trippy and see what happens you know? right yeah um but I remember watching it and like that was all cool, but it kind of ruined some of the magic for me a little bit. Oh, okay. Because when they go into the like the candy part, I'm mm-hmm. not really sure what that's called, where everything's edible. Yeah. It's super obvious that it's all like steel. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, right. crappily painted like plastic stuff mm-hmm. and like, you know. It's just like those, like, like it's like fucking, uh, it's like beach balls just painted to look like suckers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But it, imagine how much fun that would be to be, like, you know, working on that set and be the person that, like, you know, like, mm. gets to, like, make those props and shit. You would think so, man. But check this out. Fun fact. Give it to the me. Let's do whole... it. The <laughs> whole... Okay, I was going to say, sorry. Uh, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We may or may not do this um, for many movies. I'm going to try not to. But that You're whole cool. Chocolate River, they actually put like um not milk but like cream in it in order to maintain that like creamy aspect no shit i didn't know that that's awesome and it was a closed set with really really fucking hot lights so that shit would curdle oh and they had to re- like it smelled really bad that's and they had not to so regularly- awesome yeah no like it wasn't <laughs> that sucks. like hey, yeah exactly like so I feel like anyway. Mitch Hedberg, who was just like, how many people feel like human beings tonight? How many people feel like animals? I cheered to the human beings pot because I did not know there was a second pot to the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fucking great choice, dude. Uh, I love that shit. Yeah. So my number five is actually uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And of course, like I said, this is in no particular order because, I mean, like I have smoked clouds of cannabis to that fucking movie. And uh, How can you not? Yeah, right? Fun fact about our... Um, media partners actually they fucking um well actually cosplayed as jay and silent bob 
and it turned out really good. Yeah, we should pop up an see. image somewhere, you know, like maybe like right here or something. Yeah, we'll put it like, yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, what was it? It was the guy that is shooting their biography, their documentary, um, actually liked our photo on Instagram too and like commented on it and everything. That is dude. fucking dope, dude. That's fucking sick. That is, yeah, it felt pretty cool. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Isn't it cool when you like, it's odd, you kind of get like a little like burst of joy when there's like a high profile person that likes some, something of yours and you're like, oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> you, you know, yeah, that's, it's weird that they even knows that they even notice you. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking, your guys' cosplay was amazing, dude. Like it was really, really up there. Me and Ali did a cosplay of a few different like people. Our best one was definitely uh, TJ and Spinelli oh, from yeah. Recess. Like, that was our best one. That'd be a good yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was fucking perfect because I found the perfect green coat at Goodwill. Like, yeah, it was really awesome. But anyway, going back to the Jane Silent Bob strike back, like, I've been actually watching that movie since I was fucking, like, really, really little. And uh, fun fact about that movie, uh, so there was a time wherever I was at the mall with, like, my all of our friends and my sister and, like, a bunch of us little hood rat kids. And we were over at Lloyd Center, and um, they all went to, like, go to, like, these stores and shit I had no interest in going to. Mm -hmm. I did what I wanted to do with them, and then I was kind of done. So I went over to the movie theater because I knew they were going to take a while. So I was, like... I really wanted to see Jay and Silent Bob strike back. And I was like, I don't know, like 11 years old, I think, 10 years old. And um, I uh, ended up getting the ticket. And then they stopped me whenever I was trying to get into the movie to tear the ticket. And they were like, wait, yeah. you're trying to see what? They're like, you can't fucking see this movie. <laughs> like this little <laughs> fucking, this little kid trying to go see Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Uh, and then they were like, you know, Shrek is playing. I'm like, do you really think dude, I want to see Shrek? Like, I'm trying to get into trade. Jay and Silent Bob. Do you yeah. really think that I really want to see Shrek? That Come on, man. Trade. I know. Like, it was it was not fucking fun. But I, I got, I was that fucking close. Like, that would have been so cool just to be a little kid. They go and check the theater and be like, you know, there's a kid in there watching Jay and Silent Bob. Man, I bet if you had just, like, put on a little mustache, mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have worked. Should have just gone over to Spencer's, get one of the glasses yeah, with the exactly. nose and the mustache. Yeah, yeah. Get a fedora and an overcoat and just sit just there Just get the really theater. indignant when they say that you shouldn't go in there. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. what do you mean oh that would be a fucking that would be awesome so, yeah if oh. only kids were that you know quick on their feet i know like oh dude if i could fucking go back in time with the mentality i have now i would be like a little don corleone <laughs> yeah i would fucking like run shit yeah. <laughs> that's for sure like i i wouldn't i'd probably be like fairly similar except like just smarter yeah yeah just more yeah just, just more intelligent <laughs> just more like uh, uh, uh that's gonna hurt i mean, be like, if you were like I'm you know like had like your percent. like current mental state and you were just like <laughs> like boom you're younger again mm -hmm. but you went through everything as an adult you remember everything that you went through and then boom you're like wow i can do everything oh with this God, current dude, mentality that i have right now you, i'd punch some people out so hard dude same here like yeah, i would absolutely. fuck some people up that really bugged me when little, <laughs> it's cool man when it's like it's you know oh they're just well, they're, it's cool because right. it's, well, it's how they communicate as kids. Or, I mean, at least when I was growing up. Yeah. Well, I was such a mellow guy, like in high school, like, and like, there were so many people that fucking bugged me. If I would just like go back in time and just go up to those people and knock them the fuck out, people would be like, Joe, what the fuck? <laughs> like it would blow people the fuck away. They'd be like, what the hell happened to you? Dude. I'm like, I just don't like hillbillies in the future. <laughs> you'll know why too. In the future, you'll know why. Bro. And I was just like, you know, that Confederate flag. I've been talking shit about that for a long fucking time. And now everybody's like, oh, we can't can't show that anymore yeah fucking think <laughs> yeah fucking think and i was like why don't you like rednecks see the fucking future <laughs> Dude, i kind of thought that would have been like a, a hills have eyes reference and you just knew that shit was coming <laughs> yeah. that movie's so scary that's a great movie too Aww. i love that you love all those b movies and shit oh, yeah yeah that one gets me that i know for sure fun. i know like i like that we go off subject and now going back to movies mm -hmm. uh the reason we why i like this back, uh, right the reason obviously why it's good to fucking smoke to this one is because i mean it's just a fucking obvious stoner movie i mean they fucking had the little scooby-doo reference and they call them doobie snacks like that's one of my favorite scenes Bro. of the movie <laughs> when they're like getting the people high and it's like playing magic carpet ride <laughs> i love that shit and kevin smith is just a fucking genius he's just a giant inspiration yeah. i love that fucking guy he's amazing mm -hmm. so what's your next pick man um oh dude okay so it's a fucking bruce lee movie because bruce lee is just like dope bruce Lee's but it's man. like one of I, I like the intense ones when i'm when i'm stoned because I, I, like like, I get like really excited that's what i'm saying yeah. like we kind of went over our list to chop. begin with and then I'm mine are fucking, super like basic stoner I'm movies gonna, and like, you're amazing i'm gonna like <laughs> kick 
and kick and kick and kick. You know? like, <laughs> I, I like, like to I just kick, like <laughs> jab and kick. I'm not good at it, but I'm just, ah, you know. <laughs> but um, so it's it's called The Chinese Connection. But this is one of those movies that um, what they did is they first released it um, in China and then they re-released it in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And in China, it's called The Fist of Fury, singular. Uh, See, I've heard it called Fist of Fury, actually. <laughs> yeah, um, but then there's also Chinese Connection, which okay. is another name. Because what happened there is there's another one of his movies, Fists of Fury, mm -hmm. that is also called Big Boss. That was the original name. And then U.S. called okay. Fists of Fury. See, I feel like I've ridiculous. heard that name tossed around, too, actually. Yeah, it's really annoying. I went through, like, a martial arts movie kick back in the day. Go on. <laughs> it's, uh, so, I mean, obviously, it's Bruce Lee, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of the only, like... Bruce Lee films where he die. I mean, there's not very many Bruce Lee films, right? Mm -hmm. But where he dies in the end, but he dies very specifically and he meets it like head on because it's a, re like it's a revenge movie, mm -hmm. but it has all these really, really awesome, like little one liners and little bits that have just kind of become iconic. Okay. Like there's, um, there's one where he goes to the uh, Japanese dojo that, um, is where he eventually is like kind of warring and, fighting everybody mm -hmm. but he goes in there um <clears throat> like initially to teach them a lesson right and there i forget what the sign says but there's like a sign in there and uh he beats everybody up because he's awesome <laughs> and then um gets like it gets the sign and it's like paper and he rips the paper up and he shoves it in this guy's mouth and he's like it's paper right now next time it'll be glass which That's is like, badass. Ah, you know, <laughs> and then, That's really badass. And he also used that movie to talk about like uh, how he felt about how his pe you know, the Chinese people were just kind of being shit on all of the time. You know, kind mm -hmm. of Irish people, you know, get shit on. You know, th there's just certain demographics that have just kind of been shit yeah. on throughout history. Mm -hmm. um, obviously. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But there's a scene where um, he's. Um, just kind of wandering around and he wants to go into this park and there's a sign and the sign says um no dogs no chinese mm. allowed in park and he does this just like uh, he was kind of famous for doing these really really high up kicks and he'd like like there's uh, i forget what the show is but he, he kicks up and like the street breaks lamp glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i think so, that was a uh, green hornet yeah when he did that yeah um so he does that to this this sign and like breaks it in half but he does it in front of like a japanese cop you know mm. like super just like ah fuck you nice hell yeah, yeah. So. i love that shit that's fucking awesome yeah yeah he was the one that fucking like pioneered that high up kick mm -hmm. because he did it in uh green hornet and for the people that don't know about the green hornet actually bruce lee was so fast they had to slow down the footage yeah. they used like, to have to speed it up yeah or what's that, up it, they used it was standard in a lot of martial arts movies to mm -hmm. speed up whoever it was that they were mm -hmm. they were filming Bruce oh, okay. was the very first one that they ever had to like. Oh, oh, okay. Wind that so with everybody back. else, they had to speed yeah, it up. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was like, they used to have to speed that shit up. Oh, oh yeah, people. for yeah, sure. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's okay. No, no, no problem. I was like, but wait, yeah, what? no, no. That yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, totally right. They that's awesome. Yeah, down. he fucking was super fucking fast, and I love cool. I love watching He's like so the old cool. like uh, like when he was first like showing people Jeet Kune Do, mm -hmm. like and there's like really famous footage of him in like a he's like in like a school gym or something like that and like yeah he, that was when he showed the one inch punch but then he also was showing people how fucking fast he is and he tried to get the fastest person there to block him and he was so fucking fast you literally see him like go up and back and then like a fraction of like a second later then you see the dude blocking like when you slow it down he's just like Whoa! like he's so yeah. fucking fast yeah. and it was it was so cool to watch him do that sort of shit like imagine what he would fucking would have done if he would have stayed tail, alive bro dragon whips his fucking tail <laughs> that is the best kick ever he always gets him with that one mm -hmm. always. yeah and uh there's another really good uh martial arts um <laughs> movies a uh, martial artist named uh, tony jaw yeah like i fucking love I tony jaw do you ever watch tony jaw do you ever uh, see any of his movies he was so. in he was in the protector he was in ung Bok. no oh okay dude like so he's uh he's he does muay thai like that's his he thing he runs up a tree yeah like That's he fuck, cool. he's a badass I'm motherfucker. An arborist. That is hard to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just does yeah. it. <laughs> Not easy. I know what I'm saying. I appreciate you what you do is there, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I appreciate about you. That's what I appreciate about you. Dude, that's what I was talking about earlier. Like the ultimate badass move would just be to 
eat some fucking glass in front of somebody. Right? That would be pretty badass, yeah. actually. <laughs> if I can't just be like, <laughs> just bite down to hold on like it a fucking. Real hard. Either oh my that god, or real to... hard. Oh, dude, I wonder if they could invent like a mouthpiece that you could wear. I'm gonna invent that. Trademarked on the Hippie Speedball podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna invent that. That's pretty fucking Absolutely. awesome. That's a great fucking idea, dude. Oh, uh, dude, it's, it'll be my anti-bullying like campaign. That that's a cool way to right? fucking market it. Could you imagine right. like somebody picking on a kid? And he just grabs like a glass soda bottle in the fucking lunchroom. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just what? chews glass and just spits it out. Yeah, I Some wouldn't touch that fucking like kid. I'd be like, this kid is the devil, right. and I'm about to leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you shouldn't be a bully in the first place. So yeah. that that is a that is a even thing. though we're talking about punching people, we only punch them if they deserve it. They're or bad people. If they're bad people, they agree to it. Exactly. You, can you know, also fight your friends. <laughs> You can it's also consensual fight your funting and uh, punching, yep. Pu- yep. funting, fighting, punching. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this whiskey is feeling nice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you so much for bringing this again. I'm fucking enjoying this. You're the buddy. one that got me turned on to the stuff. I've gotten a few bottle of, bottles of it since. <sighs> Two gingers. It's where yeah. it's at. Two gingers. Found at your All local right. liquor store. If you're in Oregon, you can do the Oregon liquor search. If you go online and you can look up the quantities and qualities of different liquors in your area. You know those, you know those <laughs> things where they just do like those sounds? Like, shh, shh, shh. Oh yeah, the um. Uh, I am now putting away. Sp- Am AMSR yeah. ASMR or something like yeah. that. How do you pronounce yeah. it? ASMR. ASMR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought about a, a funny idea to do that. I'm actually, polishing silver. 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 <laughs> I don't. That is such I don't a. Know. I don't know. If that's that is a really good, weird thing, okay. right? Okay. All right. So it's my okay. number four choice <laughs> is. <laughs> is a super basic stoner movie again, and but but it's a really good one. No, it's but... uh, How High. Do you ever see How High? No. Has anybody over here seen How oh, High? Yeah. Okay. Have, you actually have seen How High? <laughs> <laughs> that movie is a fucking classic. And also, in my opinion, it's one of the best uh, soundtracks to smoke to. So if oh, you ever yeah. turn on that soundtrack, like, I mean, it starts off like in the movie, whenever he first meets him, he gets in his car. He's like, man, that shit smells good as hell. I'm Jamal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because they're sitting like the way it starts off. Like, so, so the premise of the movie is mm-hmm. it's about these uh, this guy. Um, his friend ends up dying in the very beginning of the movie, okay. like when he's trying to like meet this girl and he ends up like uh, lighting himself on fire because he lights his like he's wearing like these fake ass dreadlocks oh, and then no. he ends up lighting them on fire by accident because he falls asleep with a blunt in his mouth and uh, he ends up living through that falls out the window, oh, lives through that and then gets hit by a truck. <laughs> So it's a historical movie. Yeah, it's a historical movie. Uh, it's a basic. <laughs> it's a really good biopic. Oh, dude, yeah, it was an Academy Award winning I I, nomination. I think I heard about this biography. Yeah, it was it was really phenomenal. Yeah. But uh, anyway, he takes it's his friend's ashes right. and he puts them into a pot plant. Oh fuck! And so anytime yeah. he's yeah. Oh my god, this movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's an amazing, and uh, at any time he smokes it, he can see his dead friend. <gasps> That like, is such a good fucking premise. Is that a great idea? So he like that is such a good yeah. premise. Yeah, and so he mean? ends up like uh, freaking out when he first like does it or whatever, and then he's like smoking in his car, and then his friend just pops up in the back seat, like, and he's like yeah. wearing like and he's wearing like a white suit because he's up in heaven and shit, and he's always got like a glass in his hand and shit, and like he's yeah. like super like laid back and cool, but he ends up helping. Uh, like the guy uh, he ends up meeting, uh, Jam- like Jamal, uh. he's they're sitting in their cars, and then he realizes that he's got no, um, he's got no wraps. Like he's holding up a bunch of weed, and he's got nothing to roll it up in. Oh. And then uh, Jamal is in his car, and he's got all these like flakes and shit. And then he ends up trying to dump them, but then the fan turns on in his car, and it blows <laughs> the flakes all over the place. And so that he's got the wraps, and then they they both see each other freaking out in their cars, like right next to each other, and they look at each other, and he's just like, "Hey, got blunt." <laughs> he's like got weed <laughs> yeah. then he ends up going over to his car and then they smoke that weed together mm. and then so they both see the ghost oh shit. and then he okay. ends up helping them get into the he has like gives them a perfect score on their sats oh nice. so they can get into any college they want to God, i love that that is the ultimate like what are you going to do with the ghost? You're going to get your SATs perfect. Well, they happened to be <laughs> taking the test when they smoked it. Oh, like, okay. so they were going into it and they were like, hey, you can get us the perfect score on these fucking ever... uh, these. They call them the THCs, though, in the movie. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you ever take your SATs? I never actually took them. Me either. Yeah, never either. took them. Never had, had any interest. Didn't fucking care. Fuck it. No. I was like, Why? I ain't going to have some test Why? fucking tell me that shit. I ain't going to go sat. 
Yeah, I ain't gonna go. <laughs> I ain't gonna pee sat either. Exactly, man. I sit. Uh, I already sat when I pee. I don't need one from you. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but uh they end up picking um any college that they want to so they pick harvard whoa it keeps going yeah holy shit yeah. what happens this next? is just the beginning of the movie no <laughs> how much weed last like how much weed do they got with that but he has grew a whole plant oh so the plant just produces him yeah wait <laughs> well, i mean the ghost his ghost man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is so fucking cool, man. The plant produces all of us, actually. Oh, it does. It do oh, that got deep. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, they end up like that. going to Harvard, and they, you know, just end up kind of just like fucking shit up, you know. And they get everybody high there and stuff, and they end up like fucking with this fraternity and like this really like rich guy and shit. But like, you know, there's always like the like the really like uber rich guys and like the deans like really like stuck up and shit. But they get they give him pot brownies and get him really high. Mm -hmm. And like the campus security is trying to bust him throughout the movie, but then they he ends up finding the weed and ends up trying to roll up a joint and mm. then he ends up seeing the friend oh man <laughs> yeah it, it the, just gets passed around the, yeah and Damn. then they end up, yeah like well eventually at first it's just theirs and then they right. like giving them like perfect scores and stuff like that but that's a really great movie to fucking light up a joint or a blunt and kick back to or just Dude. like i said the soundtrack itself is really good because cypress hill shows up in the movie because they throw like this massive halloween party in the fucking college and uh, cypress hill is the fucking group playing and they have this friend that uh, his name is I Need Money, and he doesn't speak through the whole movie, but he has I Need Money on like on his teeth, <laughs> like in like a grill, and Damn. it's it's a great great fucking movie, and it's starring uh, Method Man and Red Man. Okay. Yeah. So guys you know, from the Wu Tang. They could have fucking set themselves up good for that though, dude. Like it's you, a great movie. Could, well, they tried I mean, to make like, a sequel, it. but it just it's fucking weak. Because they didn't go the right direction. Think about it. How man. would you go with the sequel for that? Fucking super spy, bro what super spy you could get him into like the cia or whatever you know what i mean because you smoke this thing and then you're like all right ghost go find it and then the ghost goes and finds it and then comes and brings you all the intel but the, the whole plant ends up getting smoked up what no you keep it alive but then they end up doing the same thing with ben franklin at the end of the movie <laughs> oh they, man they ended up finding his imagine? grave and could then you... take his ashes and put bro, it into a pot plant <laughs> bro check this out man let's just pretend time travel exists right could you imagine just going back in time and killing all of the important people throughout history just so that you could put them into pop plants and well like when they're old right like after they've done what they've done <laughs> right kill them and then put them into pop plants and then use those seeds so that you could pass on their like knowledge and shit to future generations Okay, anyway. so what about like what about the influence that they make at the time to inspire other people? No, you do it. You cause when a butterfly old. effect. You do it when they're old. This is typical time traveling mistake, there, JJ. What are you going to no, do with the present time? It is not. You still have, have you, to affect. The have present. you ever seen? 12 are you going to split dimensions first and then no, bring a different one in so that way you can? Splitting. Have you ever seen Twelve Monkeys? It's time travel. That's not true. <laughs> okay, no time travel is incredibly the whole convoluted. Is dimension but, splitting. <laughs> but but the but no. Have you ever seen Twelve Monkeys? No. Ah, well, that's your problem. Okay. <laughs> well, have, have you ever all seen I thought of, all I see is a family guy. No, I've seen like a couple monkeys at the zoo, but definitely the not. dude oh, that works bro. at the convenience is, store on Family Guy, Chris's the, boss. Again, back to the movies. It's one of the best time You're like, well, go watch ever that made. movie, learn its and messages, it's and you'll Willis. learn what we're talking about here. You seriously fucking will, both of y'all. <laughs> time is nonlinear, right? So it's okay for you to fuck with it. That is true. I also believe that time isn't linear. So, and obviously... You believe it's circular, I'm guessing. You're talking about a circular timeline. It's... I don't think it's a... Okay. I, don't, I don't think it's a, a, a shape that we can fucking understand. Can we, we put some sort of effect understand. in the in post there? <laughs> <laughs> can we right? do like a Wayne's World? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that movie's so good. That's a great fucking movie. movie. Female director, am I right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not like, yeah, fun little um, fact. Uh, but anyway, because obviously you guys are, you know, multi d the dimensions already exist. It's not like you're creating them by just like fracturing time or whatever, right? You know what I mean? So you can't you can't just be like, oh, dimension, dimension. Like they already fucking happened, man. Yeah. You know that's not your power. So when you but, are okay, fucking so... with time. It's literally about reappearing on, sorry, 
it's it's electricity, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just about manipulating where your electricity is going. But you also have to think of how you're how you're affecting the occupants of the present time, though. So think of you're a person. It's already and happened. Then that, but but also think of you're a person. But if you were to go back in time and do it, it hasn't happened though. Because in your timeline it has, but if you were to go, you split the timeline, and this but, time it has, this time it hasn't. But that already exists because everything exists. Okay. So if you kill, okay, so let's say you're a person that lives in that time. So let's mm-hmm. say you go back in time and you're like, I'm going to kill Ben Franklin, put him into a pot plant, mm-hmm. you know, so I can inspire tons of people. You're a person. You're like, dude, Ben Franklin just got whacked. Yeah. So and there's nobody... no more Ben Franklin. Yeah. Okay, so what about the people that would have been inspired then, who would have been inspired by other people, inspired by other people, inspired by other people, which causes that timeline shift, which means inventions wouldn't be made, which means that, that is a surf different wouldn't... reality, man. So you, so you would create a different reality for that. that no, 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 moment. you, no, you don't create a different reality. That different reality already exists. Is what I'm saying is every single one of the realities that could ever possibly happen. <laughs> And I'm serious about this. No, 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 no. I love this. Every I love single, talking this about this. Like, I'm laughing shit. because Have you ever the, seen how high a movie with Wu Tang is what got us on this conversation. Like, well, yeah. that's one thing I just love about well, it. Wu Tang. <laughs> it ain't nothing to fuck with. That's true. Wu Tang on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me your timeline stuff. Everything fucking ex- exists right now. So you're you're saying, right, oh, what if you go back in time and you change something and da 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 da? Well, fuck it, man. That org that already is. Yeah. How do you think it got there? Or how do you think it didn't get there? Da, 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 da. So time is this blah, 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 wobbly thing. And all it would be doing is harnessing the ability to, like I said, move your molecules around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Cool, man. I like that. So, but, so I'm, I mean, I'm saying, <laughs> imagine a film mm-hmm. where- You take all and, the important people- and this this would be a would new you do reality. Bad, would you do bad people too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You smoke up Genghis Khan. Because <laughs> well, you obviously you would wait until they have done their time, right? So you you it'd be like a board of people, right? And they'd be like, okay, um, da 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 da. Okay, now you have to go into the portal. And it's because Genghis Khan has already murdered and raped everybody. Well, no, he actually was very, very So you would take him just at the point forward. of death. Yeah, he was actually okay, very, so very forward that. with women. I said when they were old, after they'd done their stuff. Did you say that? Bro. I didn't catch that. Did you catch that? Yeah, oh, yeah. That, um, like three times. But not at the point of death, just when you. they were old. Okay. Yeah, just when they were just old. Just because you're old doesn't mean It happens. Right. All right, so. cool. I missed that yeah. part, I guess. And then bad. they just like... <sighs> I got stuck on dimensions and time shit. I know, I love that stuff. Yeah. I My... Okay, we we have to talk later about that. I can go on. <laughs> this is why I'm so glad I'm doing this episode with you, JJ. Salute. Sponsor. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. All right, so tell me about your next pick. Uh, it's talking about spiritual shit and different dimensions and whatnot. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, good choice. Here's the thing. That is one of my top five favorite movies of all time. And I'm not just like, oh, it's a Star Wars movie, da 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 da. It's a fucking good movie, dude. Mm-hmm. It is one of the first three times as a kid that I actually had like a spiritual experience, you know? No, 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 no. It's funny that you say that because I had a similar moment. I just want to interject something real though. This yeah, is the bro, first mo- This is the first this movie I remember seeing in theaters. The no. very first movie. Yeah. You saw it in theaters. I did. You I did, it actually. It was some sort of like anniversary re release of it. And uh, I remember going to the movie theater and seeing Empire Strikes Back. And because uh, I remember very vividly the scene wherever he's training with Yoda, mm-hmm. like, you know, and uh, so I just wanted to like, yeah, I have a That's... long history with Empire as well. I'm glad you chose that. That's yeah. a great choice. Well, so, so... Shout out to we're my pops. Not, he's one of the only family gonna, members that listens. We're <laughs> not going to get on this subject, but I just have to say, and kids hashtag these days. So I'll throw that in there, I suppose. Fuck Medicalorians hashtag. They don't exist. Anyway. They don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, not gonna do it <laughs> because the so one of the best things about the empire strikes back right is it talks about what the fucking force is and how yep. it can be it can be accessed by literally anybody at any time as long as they are attuned to mm-hmm. what they need to be attuned to you know what i mean and then it the trains more, us all on the force and then the more attuned you are to it the more you can use it and you know that's why yoda's like a little fucking Buddha guy, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's not some tiny medi calorian right now. I know. Fuck him, fuck him, the fuck him. Fucking dude. they cheat. The, I'm yes, not, I fuck can't em. get into it. I can't get into it. Fuck it. Let's get into it. <sighs> fuck it. I hate it too, so fuck it. There's people that need to hear this shit. 
Okay. We're done with it. I'm done. I'm so done with it. So <laughs> medicalorians, done with it. medicalorians, when they put those into the canon, completely changed the entirety of what Star Wars was about. Because Star Wars, Disney at its heart, has a, uh, D- Disney has a tendency to do that. It wasn't Disney at the time, dude. I it love was the Lucas rage films. that immediately. It was George Lucas. <laughs> What's that? It was it was Lucas Films. He hadn't sold it to Disney at the time. Because it was the Phantom Menace that introduced many calorians. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but so Star Wars at its co- its core, right, is a is a story about an. Wait, underdog. didn't did Star Wars already have deals with ABC at that time? So didn't they already have, have no some idea. sort of creative control with Disney? I have no idea. Because I'm sorry. No, you're. I fine. need to look that up. Can it, you pull yeah. that up by any chance? Maybe. It very I'll well could have been. On that but, one. Okay. <laughs> so. Go ahead. You're okay. I'm just like thinking about it again. And I'm not going to start on Jar Jar Binks either. No, it's okay. He's a Sith bastard. Most of us agree on Jar Jar Binks. <sighs> it's generational. Mm-hmm. That my, is... my kid brother, Blake, he's 19. He likes him. Because he doesn't understand that he doomed the entire galaxy. Not just the <laughs> world, the entire galaxy. It's his fault. Yeah. Well, anyway. Juno's stuck in the generation with the baby Yoda shit. So yeah, I know. I'm not even going to get onto that. I haven't even. Yeah, okay, I know. So just, just. So anyway, really quick, Medic Lawrence, as quick as I can. The like, like I was saying, right? So Empire Strikes Back, one of the greatest top five movies ever made. Great fucking film. Um, it the the Force is something again. It can be accessed by anybody. It surrounds us. It binds us. It's the Force, right? You know. And and so at its at its heart, this is an underdog story about a kid who just kind of got his whole world blown up and has nowhere else to turn and wants to fight this bad thing and doesn't really know how or know why. And he has to learn how to control that youthful, like, kind of rage and emotion into something that is... Uh, powerful and awesome and good and he's able to do that by accessing the force because it's accessible to anybody as long as they put in the time and the effort and do it properly you know Mm -hmm. um and then those motherfuckers (laughs) are like no 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 it's medicalorians and what those are what they said those are is it's a thing that you're either born with or you're not so certain people can't even access it. Okay. There's just normal, plain old people. And there's also the amount of medicalorians within your system. So really, really powerful Jedi, they say, are born with like copious mass amounts of medicalorians. Whereas ones who can add, eh, maybe manipulate a little here or there, they just have like some. Okay. Right? So they completely took away what it actually is which is a fucking amazing i mean it's Taoism essentially i got the heart. i got the jedi path right uh, there if you want to pull it up bro yeah do you like, want to look it up i mean go ahead do you got anything right there i think so um so this says that disney Medical did Lawrence. merge with abc in 1995 and uh, abc did play a lot of star wars but this also says george lucas invented the midichlorians in 1977 <sighs> put them in there? oh shit yeah okay <sighs> So okay, well I'm learning lots uh, about yeah, it. Yeah, I am yeah. too. But... I kind of dropped Star Wars a minute ago. Like I actually haven't even seen Rise of Skywalker. No. After the Last Jedi, like honestly, like it was funny because it was an eye opener thing about my opinion about Star Wars. The fact that I wasn't rushing to the theaters to see it. Mm-hmm. Like when I, once I realized I wasn't excited to see it, I was just like, oh, maybe I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I have that uh, beautiful Rebel Alliance flag hanging up in the living room, mm-hmm. which I fucking love, you know, and I'll always have a passion for it. But yeah. I just don't like the direction that it's gone right now. Mm. But I don't have any sort of index and I ain't going to fucking. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Later. Anyway, great. Thank fucking... you, though, man. Yeah. That up. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You to Betsy, too. She's the one that found the more important information. Oh, oh thanks, yeah. Betsy. Thanks, Betsy. Appreciate you. Salud. Appreciate that. Slancha. Hell yeah. That's mm. a great fucking I choice. I should probably drink after I say that. No. Oh, yeah, probably. Me, too. <laughs> Okay. We so, caught ourselves on our fucking shit. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to go off on that tangent. No, it's okay. But The Empire Strikes Back. That's a great fucking choice. 
boom that's fucking awesome and so uh one that you wanted to include on the list but i actually ended up putting up on there is yeah. um uh pineapple express oh, dude. let's give it up for the fucking classic pineapple express yep. i actually uh smoked a joint just outside uh fucking um the uh, clockamas town center theater before i went and saw that movie nice. that was a great fucking choice shout out to jordan stroy and ian devore mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, guys. yeah we smoked a joint and then we also like so jordan at the time had like one of those like little sneak tokes that looked like a cigarette mm. like and you could just stuff a little bit of weed there at the end yeah and so those. we ended up loading that thing like fucking like 15 fucking times <laughs> and then we got fucking lit and then the three of us went and saw pineapple express Fuck. Yeah. Like it's just it's just such a classic stoner movie because like in it especially my my favorite part is actually at the very end mm -hmm. and it's a very stoner thing to do to just kind of sit back and be like wow that was fucking intense mm -hmm. you know just like, it's like you know damn. It's, it's like you know like when you're young and you go to a party and like shit like really fucking hits the fan and you're still a little fucked up and then you end up back at home and then you're sitting on your couch like what the fuck just happened mm -hmm. <laughs> like you're kind of like I've had so I many. Can't that just fucking happened yeah Boondock Saints. <laughs> oh what a great fucking scene oh dude God, oh i love cat. that shit Sorry, yeah kid. is it dead <laughs> yes <laughs> i love that fucking movie so much uh, yeah but uh pineapple express is fucking great because at the end they're all sitting there in that diner you know yeah. and then they're like they're like the car chase was awesome you guys got a fucking car chase mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like they're also kind of like just relaying the whole fucking movie back and like they're just like wow i can't believe that just happened well yeah. that's crazy you know and like that's such a great like stoner writing and stoner move so totally. and kudos to fucking uh, seth rogan and evan goldberg because those guys have been working together since they were kids oh like, really they actually wrote mm -hmm. super bad when they were like 13 years old damn yeah that's isn't that awesome. crazy that's awesome. like and that movie was perfect because that came out my scene your year and like there couldn't have been a better time for that movie to come out because like at that movie wherever he's like uh like in the shop class and he's like what are you building he's like i'm just drilling holes man last two weeks fuck it <laughs> he's just doing that it's like i remember that came out around the time where we had like maybe like four to six weeks left of school or something like that and i was like oh god that's us bro i was like that is so us we were like, eh, fuck it. We don't give a shit. We already, we know I got our fucking diplomas. What do you do? We can't walk across the stage. Who eat a dick. We don't care. Right. <laughs> like, I don't give a damn. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Pineapple Express is a great, great fucking movie. Dude. That's one of my choices. I, I have to ask. I keep knocking on stuff. I and Pineapple Express is a great strain too. Fun oh, fact, it yeah, came it's... after the movie. Well, yeah. So anybody that's like, oh yeah, I was smoking on Pineapple Express since the 70s. <laughs> no, you weren't actually because they specifically looked up a strain that didn't exist. Like they were like, we, we need to find something that doesn't And Pineapple Express was not taken. Perfect. And so that was actually the movie before it was a strain. Anybody that tries to tell you otherwise, look up your fucking facts. Right. Anyway, you were going to say? I don't know if you have the same like concept about this film, but I kind of feel like it's a different movie if you watch it stoned versus sober. Have you ever compared the two like the, the two uh, moments or like the you know? Have you ever tried that? Yeah, I mean, I've watched it sober before. I feel no, and and hear me out, hear me out, because you know you watch it stoned, you gotta get like really really stoned. It's that it's a great movie, right? Mm -hmm. you, but. To me, when I'm when I'm watching it and I'm really really stoned, I get everything they're doing. I'm like, oh my god, that makes so much sense. Run, run, you know what I mean? And yeah, totally kick that out. And da, 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 you know, what I mean? like I get it. And so it's intense, and I'm like feeling all. He's the like, feels. you threw up in my printer, man. Right, man. <laughs> and Chicken fries. Is it broken? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so. I fucking get it. And then, but then I go back and I watch it sober and I'm just like, oh my God, they're so stupid. This is yeah, ridiculous. So it's right. like, it's almost like more comedic. I don't know. Stupid you know? is objective. You know, they're high, you know? Exactly. Well, dude, <laughs> like come when on. I, all yeah. the stupid ass shit. Done, I know. I've done so much stupid shit. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I have to. Yeah. I have to, especially in the early days of smoking mm -hmm. too. Like when you're kind of like, and that's definitely like kind of like what it more appeals to is like kind of like that earlier like demographic of smoking and shit like that, you know? Because yeah. like now you have all these like professional functional stoners, but it's still just a great fucking movie. When he kicks the fucking windshield and his foot gets dude, stuck. Dude, that's one of the best parts it's so realistic because that's exactly what would happen if you tried to do that like that windshield is not and going to fucking kick out like in the movies that's to my that's to my point because when i was stoned and watching it i was like yeah oh my god and then when i was like you know sober i was like you're so ah, oh, you're yeah, so that's silly. exactly what would happen yeah <laughs> 
I know it's fucking great. Like, and then he's fucking like driving. He's like, oh fuck! He's like, I had my leg split like a wishbone <laughs> when he's describing it at the end. Like a wishbone. I like. I fucking love that movie, and I've watched it a yeah. couple times recently too. And it's just, oh, it's so great. It's I so love good. it. And I don't know. Seth Rogen is amazing because we just recently started watching uh, Freaks and Geeks again. Like, Dude. Freaks and Geeks is kind of little honorable mention. That's a great fucking movie, like uh, show. Like they they have like such like an after school special like feel about weed, like which is really annoying. Linda that's the yeah that's linda the cartellini shit. is yeah, the shit great and jason siegel really james great. franco yeah. seth rogan fucking so many amazing people are in that fucking show and um also um oh my god first like one of their first shows together, yeah yeah it? that was a uh, judd apatow's like really first like big break and a uh, judd apatow for the people that don't know is the one that made 40 year old virgin and knocked up and he made all those fucking great movies <laughs> oh man that that scene because and this is 40 is a fun i love this is 40 <laughs> This, so the Freaks and Geeks is one of the only uh, roles that I've ever seen Seth Rogen in that it's supposed to be a little bit more um, like serious. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I fucking love that episode where he's trying to understand if he I don't know why he thinks he might be gay, but he's trying to understand. So he puts metal on. He put like he's like some metal music band in his room. Yeah. And he's like rocking out to it. And then he like stops and like takes a breath and then he puts on like ABBA or some yeah, shit and then he's like <laughs> trying to like headbang to it you know and he's yeah. like I don't I don't understand and then he puts metal back on yeah. like that has something like, to do with right, it like that's his test <laughs> it's just like it would have been hilarious if he was playing Judas Priest like yes. that would have been even oh better God, or if he dude, was playing Queen think about that. you know that like, would have been amazing. he's all like living after, after midnight. midnight do you want to know why the he was living the original leather daddy dude seriously yeah. I know that his that whole song when he's talking about um, hell bent uh, hell bent for leather for leather but no what's that one he's a uh, ah, damn it um I'm turbo drunk. lover i'm drunk no uh when he's singing about breaking the law breaking oh the breaking law. the law <laughs> that i swear to god dude i could write a thesis on why that whole entire song is about being gay i would read that Secretly. thesis because <laughs> it is you, you know that that whole breakdown when he's like you don't know what it's like ah, you know what i mean that would be really like, good. It's because he's literally having to break the law. Do you ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? A little bit. Okay, so they have these newer episodes wherever, like, so Mac, I don't know if you've seen, like, the newer seasons, but Mac got, like, fucking, like, ripped. Oh, shit. Like, he's, like, Magic Mike ripped. I like, like his yeah, it's like from going it's, like it's, really fat. To yeah, like... like it's it's pretty fucking crazy to see. Like it's pretty crazy. But there's this uh, there's episode where he wants to come out to his dad. Oh yeah, because yay. in the in the future he finally comes out. Awesome. Like yeah, Mac is finally like comes out in the show, and he wants to come out to his dad, mm. and he does this like interpretive dance, like and he does it at his dad's prison, like and uh and it, it's actually like really good. Like it's <laughs> it's it's almost like comically <laughs> fucking good because like me and Ali were watching it, we're like. I, you can't look away, can you? Like, <laughs> I mean, like, it's really impressive. Like, and it's so funny because in the episode, like, fucking Danny DeVito, because he's, like, telling he has, like, this storm brewing inside him and then God is trying to hold him and tell him it's okay and this, that, the other. And he was, like, he's, like, he's, like, and he's, like, God comes down to me and she's, like, a really hot chick. Like, and then, and then Danny DeVito's, like, wait, wait, you want to come out of the closet and God comes down to you and it's a hot chick? And he was just like, yeah. He's like, man, the Catholics really fucked you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh a, it's actually a really like fucking good episode. I'll like, and kudos thing. for it's always sunny for doing that. Like, because it was show, it's such a show. it's such a great show. You know, my first introduction to that show wasn't like the show itself. It was their Christmas special, whatever the hell, <laughs> where where Danny DeVito gets like cut out of the couch and he falls out and he looks like a like a fetus. I was like, I what the that fuck shit. am I doing? Like, because we had we had just watched one of those like claymation Rudolph things. Yeah, right? and then it was my brother's girlfriend at the time. She's like, oh, I know something that you would love. Oh, like, dude. how is this the same? It's it, well, it's because at the ah! end, at the oh, end, they sorry. do the fucking yeah, that peach like a motherfucker. <laughs> Talk about clipping. <laughs> my bad. Just uh, for the people listening, right. sorry about your eardrums. Take that. <laughs> I oh, mean, that's I'm fucking not great. Addictive. Anyway, <laughs> going from Pineapple Express to your next choice. Oh. Okay. This is why I chose you to do this episode. <laughs> this is so sick, dude. I I'm love this. So much fun. All right. Uh, 13 going on 30 is my next one. I saw that on your list, and I was do you know... so excited to figure out why this was on your list. 30 and thriving. <laughs> this 
okay. So I grew up with sisters. I've watched this I, movie since it came out. Like I've seen this movie so many times. This movie, you guys. This. Um, it low key taught me the thriller dance. It did me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Absolutely, dude. It 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 introduced me to the Talking Heads because I was very young when I saw it. Oh really? Like, oh my god, that talking. You know, because there, the Family that... Man with Nicolas Cage introduced me to the Talking Heads. Oh, there you go. I don't even. How did we get on this? Oh yeah. Okay. So this. <laughs> so this this movie I think is probably one of the top three best female chick flick romantic whatevers of all time. And I, I want to say that for two very specific reasons, man. And the very first one is the soundtrack is so great. Okay. It's a great soundtrack. It's all like, you know, Cindy Lauper, Pat Benatar. It's all the really awesome eighties, uh, new wave girl, you know, that, like that, that first, like, and what talking heads song was it on there? Ah, uh, uh, what was it? Um, shit i can't remember oh, okay but the that that scene though i, I another can you awesome look that up shelby what talking heads song was on 13 going on 30 yep. just like pop up the sound so it's the me. so Thanks, it's bro. the um the scene is um very beginning of the film the main female turns 13 and she has this oh, i'm doing this she <laughs> has <laughs> she has this it's, okay. it's, the, it's the two gingers um uh she has this party in her basement and um her best friend live next lives next door and he's kind of like a nerd like he likes photography and oh, my, a little closer closer yeah, yeah. okay uh, he likes photography and all that kind of stuff and which i guess is weird back then and he pops in at the party this little cassette and t plugs it in and it's a talking head song mm -hmm. um and i, I it's i love his dance i think it's burning down the house is it burning down the house I think correct it might be. oh <laughs> <laughs> Jeopardy. That was awesome. <laughs> Jeopardy. Oh, Trebek. All right. So, um, but he's like just fucking rocking out. Yeah, burn down the house. And everyone's just like looking at each other because nobody fucking knows who the talking heads are because they revolutionized music. They're very basic now, but they're basic because everything that they did was the first time it had well, ever a lot of people don't realize talking heads were really tied up with the punk scene mm -hmm. too like i very mean tied up like with the punk very scene. very tied up with the punk scene and they were really big like i mean psycho killer is like one of like say. like that's one of juno's favorite songs Bro, it's because like, you raise them right it's it, she like and uh like juno loves punk rock she's like really really always been into punk rock naturally wasn't like agent orange was one of their songs Ag yeah favorite? agent orange was like <laughs> one of her favorite songs so like for well, the, no, that's little, the band i forget the name of the song uh, bloodstains Bloodstains. yeah yeah and so like which is such a funny song like yeah yeah. Hey, and so like a for a fun little like story about Juno is I used to have this stroller that had like a little adapter and you could hook like a phone up to it for music and shit like that. And so um, I used to have like a punk playlist on my phone and uh, Bloodstains from Agent Orange was one of the songs on there. And then naturally one time like it just came on and June just sat forward and just started shaking her fist. Yeah. Like she was just like, and I was like, you like this. And then like, next thing you know, that's like one of her favorite songs. So I'll play it on my guitar. Sometimes she'll fucking like to start rocking out and like running around and like doing a little circle pit in the house. Like she's fucking, Fuck she's yeah. a little punk. So Dude. I have a great, I have a Raising great little, right. yeah, I have a great little photo shoot idea that I want to do. And uh fucking Mrs. Consciously Captured over here is going to help me out with it. And uh so I want to rebuild my battle jacket from high school. Mm. And so like, uh, so before, uh so like my freshman year and in eighth grade, I used to have a leather jacket that had the stuff and the pens and that, that kind jacket, of shit yeah. yeah like and so, yeah i was gonna say you guys are like i remember this yeah <laughs> yeah and so uh i want to rebuild that jacket and then maybe add a few more things to it but juniper loves that music too so i'm gonna get her like a battle vest you know, like, and I'm going to get her like the pins and the studs and I'm going to take her to my old shop, which is another state of mine. Shout out to another state of mine in Portland. They still great, around? great. Yeah. They moved to Hawthorne. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know how they're doing during COVID-19. I hope that they were able to fucking. My fingers are yes, crossed. Yes. 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 I really fucking hope that they're able to like, you know, pull through because another state of mind in Portland was the shop for all the punks and all the metal heads and like all the horror freaks and all those people. Is like for people who had another state of mind. Yeah. Yeah, the people that like you know like they yeah right yeah <laughs> like they wanted to go there for the special shirts that you couldn't find elsewhere you know right. because like you know they were a little bit more spendy because it was a specialty shop and they were trying to keep their heads afloat so you wanted mm -hmm. to support that you know but their their stud prices were awesome because you could buy them in bulk right you know like i remember that like they were i think like they broke down to like a penny a piece like you could buy a 
fuckload of studs. Dude. Like, and I remember that. Like, I remember buying, like, Ziploc baggies full of studs and mm-hmm. pins and fucking getting, like, uh, they had a great selection of uh, T-shirts because one section was all the punk bands and the metal bands that you couldn't find anywhere else. And Bro. then the other section was all horror movies and sci-fi movies and B-movies and, like, random, like, pop culture shit before you could find that shit in Hot Topic. Right. You know, before you could find that shit everywhere else. Do you remember when AFI was a really big thing? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I never was into I had, AFI, but I know people I liked that him like for them. a little while. I Didn't you say you liked minute. AFI? Have you, he's so, I, yeah. So into AFI. Right? When I was like a scene kid in high school. Oh, dude, it absolutely. Was, all I wanted was to be in AFI. Man. <laughs> so, Singing the sorrows. Totally. <laughs> I have... I have this this very vivid memory with AFI, man. I, I had a disc. That's band. Betsy from the Boss Ladies of Canada this hey. episode. <laughs> um, I have this uh, me- uh, so disc man, right? And it's AFI, but I, I forget the name of the album. But it's that little like red crow or raven or whatever. Totally sing the sorrows. That's the album. Dude, that yeah, I okay. So name dropped. I there you go. Sing the freaking sorrows, man. Um, I was on a road trip with my family to go visit some extended family in Utah, make your assumptions there and figure out my history. (laughs) And I literally listened to that album, the entire car ride there. So angsty. Which is so angsty. So angsty. angsty. I just stare out the window of my minivan. You know what I mean? Just like, oh man, what is the world? (laughs) What is the world? What is life? (laughs) That it's like fucking I was, like same eleven. Mid of time was that, and then um, AFI was System of a Down. Yeah, steal this album. Never got yes, into System dude. of a Down personally. A good one. Mm. Never really got into them. Tool. I never got into Tool either. But I do like the singer of Tool. I do. I do like. I do like Maynard though. Like I. I really like him a lot. Maynard. 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 I have an uncle named Maynard. He played for the San Francisco Symphony. Why did I say you would? I think it's the two genders. Why don't they say you would? <laughs> you would. <laughs> All right. So why is uh, thirteen going on thirty good to watch while you're stoned? <sighs> you remember how we were talking a little bit about time travel? Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of the more interesting concepts of. No, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it time travel. No, but me I guess neither. maybe what I would call it is like a, a soul shift, a, almost exactly. Yeah. Right. Because you know, for if you haven't seen it and you're just like what the fuck are they talking about these stoners <laughs> no i'm going to call you dude this movie if you haven't seen it you're silly or you're young and you need to be raised better um mind your p's and q's you mm. uncultured swine right <laughs> right so this this girl she gets in her mind completely humiliated I'm at kidding. her 13th Go watch the movie. birthday party right and um, inadvertently, because of this humiliation and shutting herself in a closet, because that's what you do when you're upset, um, she inadvertently, magically wakes up 30 years old. But she's still But before 13. she says, her mantra is... Thirty, flirty, and thriving. Yeah, Boom. it is. It, that, that's in a. Um, it's in you a called, magazine. You called that earlier. I had to get you to say that again. It's, it's in a magazine, man. That that morning on our birthday, she yep. was like stuffing yep. her. Bra. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. it's in a magazine. And that's she's right. Like, I want to be thirty. And her and mom's like, I gotta oh. give kudos to whoever casted that movie. That little girl looks just looks like exactly yeah. like Jennifer Gardner. She did so good. And being the same, because uh, they're both goofy. They're both, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, Do you know who else played Actually, Jennifer Gardner? Audrey Rook. You remember her from high school? Shout out to Audrey. She supports the podcast, too. Um, she you know, looks like Jennifer Gardner to me. The, she always reminded me of her. The mean girl in that movie, I don't know if anybody ever watches Archer, but the the mean girl in 13 Going on 30, she she's one of the voice actresses in Archer. She plays, uh, I guess there's all different names, but Cheryl She's on It's Always Carol Sunny, too. Or, yeah. She plays Fatty Magoo. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's so funny. Um, but, yeah, so there's this there's this weird shift that happens where she wakes up and she's 30 years old, but she hasn't gone through anything that has made her 30. She's still 13. 
and she's realizing that you know all the stuff that she you know she's like friends with madonna it's like the opposite of what we were talking about earlier exactly it's the exact opposite so but that's a really fucking interesting concept for Mm -hmm. me and i don't know about you but when i'm stoned i really like to get into those spaces where it's just like oh Oh, i love it i thrive in those spaces so, you know, you listen. Allie's to... always giving me shit how much energy and how much like brain power I have when I'm stoned. Oh, I'm man. like, I come up with my best ideas. That's when I write. That's <laughs> yeah. abs- that's yeah. when I write. That's when I draw. See, Moonlight that's Macabre yeah. completely came up while I was high at the table and I was like, hey, isn't this a cool idea? Ooh, and you can add this. Ooh, Bro. and you can add this. And yeah. That whole that whole storyline I have for, for the person who like goes past that veil and dies and then and then becomes, you know, one of the assassin death assassin peoples i've told you about that with the different universes and stuff Mm -hmm. that was all you know it brought together because one night i was just like alone and i just got baloney and i was just (laughs) like haha this is great this is fun but anyway 13 long also is very cute um it's a very cute little story and it it does one of those things where um it doesn't go where you expect it to but it does wrap up the way you would like it to so it's not like it ends and you don't feel complete, but it ends and you feel like, oh, haha, that was a little bit of fun buggery that they brought me along there on the end. Mm-hmm. You know. Plus, it's Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner, and they have really good chemistry. Yeah. And for those that you know are listening that don't know who Mark Ruffalo is by name, oh. he's the one that played the Hulk in the Avengers. Come on. Who does? Okay. Tisk. Well, some people might not know That's true. Name. I'm like, sorry. Tisk we're tisk giant you. movie geeks. That's I'm why sorry. you're on this episode with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tisk yeah. Okay. Tisk. All right. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. You. Cool. Anyway, awesome. I will say that we have uh, a little bit of battery left. So, okay, all right, we got to keep going, right? All, all right. right, okay. So, um, all right. Um, was that uh, that's bad French? Um, that was number. I have one more after that. Okay, all right. So it's my turn. Uh, yeah. So my next choice is actually the Imaginarium with Doctor Panassis. Mm. And uh, have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. Imaginarium with Doctor so Panassis. So good. So I actually only understood that movie because I was stoned, and I had to watch really? it like five or six times to really fully like grasp oh, that movie because like it was it's so in depth. For those that don't know, it's a it's a movie about this guy who kind of is like a meditation kind of guru. Like he's like runs like a sideshow kind of thing, and uh, Lily Cole and um, Andrew Garfield are his two assistants Mm -hmm. and uh, Andrew Garfield is obviously the one that played Spider-Man in the series that came out like which my my opinion great fucking Mm Spider-Man I thought I loved those two Spider-Man movies that he was in but um, it like he has like this weird like meditation sort of thing where he kind of like uh, puts them like in like this uh, like you have like this little portal that you kind of walk through and he puts you in like this weird state Mm -hmm. and uh and it's like it's kind of a weird thing go check it out after you listen to the podcast of course and uh but and a fun little fact about the movie is heath ledger's real last movie a lot of people think it's the dark knight but it's not he died halfway through filming yes which is why they changed the plot of the movie due to this why don't you go mm-hmm. ahead and fill people in no Jump no in. no it's your it's your film sorry no 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 it's okay it's, i love it's, that you it's, like it's this so, movie too I, but this movie's great it's it's, it's like, so um he ends up uh basically like uh every time like he goes into the imaginarium this one like heath ledger he's a different person he looks like a different person that was because heath ledger died so that what they basically did is they hired these actors to play heath ledger's character while he's in this alternate dimension imaginarium kind of world I yeah, and I feel like it was like it wasn't necessarily pro bono or something like that, but the actors were like they were like yes, I will do that, mm-hmm. you know, because it was his last yeah. kind of film. Yeah, and they, all the money went to his daughter. His exactly. Yeah, yeah. It went to Heath Ledger's daughter. It's it's such a great example to me though of good writing. Yeah, it because really is. This literally catastrophic thing happened. Yeah. And that has completely ruined movies. It makes before. me want to read it's the original script. Before, I want right? to read the original script. Dude, can like, you get your hands on that, man? Have you okay, someday? Have this you podcast ever, might blow up. So have we'll you see. ever gotten? <laughs> have you ever gotten um, screen the screenplays of like your favorite movies and sat there and read them? Oh, yeah, you hell yeah, bro. That's how I learned how to write screenplays. Um, uh, one of my favorite ones, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Damn it, I keep doing this. I'm sorry. Imaginarium okay. of Doctor Parnassus. No, it's okay. Eternal Sunshine do it for that one it's so good because they they have different um colors that will code you know like the this the, which script is and the gold script is the one that they usually um film off of so even though it's the gold script it's so cool because you when you watch the film you know and then you read the thing you even realize that it's the editing room and dudes like shelby who really end up making that 
become what it should be. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Shelby's absolutely. the fucking it man. Takes, dude. It takes great writers to adapt everything and to say, okay, yeah, this is the framework and everything. But it's it it in my personal opinion, it's the editors who really bring all of that shit together. Yeah, because editing you know, is so there's... powerful. Like you can you can make one movie look like a completely different movie with editing. There, you know, there, there's portions in there where when you read the way that it, you know that they wanted it originally let's say for dialogue it doesn't quite make as much sense as the way that the editor you know so they just took the scene and whoop yeah flipped it around it, it shows you know the I mean? entourage effect and it really takes to make takes, a movie it takes a like, fucking village it takes a huge fucking, a village. fucking village sit there and watch really the goddamn credits after a movie and watch how many people it took yeah. to make that piece of fucking art that you just watched mm -hmm. that you just sat there oh that was a cool hour and a half yeah, do you no. realize how much fucking work <laughs> that took to make like it's it's Dude. it's really impressive, and that's why I really love having Shelby around because yeah. like he's really Shout good out. at what he does. He's fucking Shelby really loves what he does you. with a Y. Thank yeah. you. S H E L B Y at Conscious Capture so. on Instagram. I like to know how to spell people's names because it's important to them and to me. And I still love if the fact that you spell your name with an I and it should be a Y. I'm sorry, but there's. I met him because we're industry basically friends because yeah. like I mean like I had him on the show and I oh, didn't even, I didn't check out your Instagram like I had like I had like no idea and I had the info for it but I was like I don't have an Instagram at the right. time so like yeah, so I was just like you know I, I was just like okay I'll just you know hang out with you you guys are weed people mm -hmm. and then come to find out I jump on this motherfucker's got a shitload of followers phenomenal photographer Hell like yeah. yeah he's been featured in high times like you Man. know he's works with several farms like to phenomenal Shelby. fucking work to you Shelby give me Shelby. Shots and talking sweet to me i'm gonna blush over here oh yeah, yeah absolutely well you there's no camera on you you blush away oh there is a camera though unfortunately now oh yeah look at that's so cute catching yeah. all the <laughs> <I'm so cute. laughs> it's a really cute camera <laughs> you know what's great is this episode is going to be played in a that's dispensary <laughs> oh really several that's actually so awesome <laughs> oh dude i feel hello khalifa and I wild west emporium <laughs> And possibly Speaking nectar of soon. Oriums, the imaginary. No, it's an imaginary. Imaginarium. An hey, hey, that's a great it's fucking kind transition, of though. Painting, Salute. Bro. Good fucking job. Look at me with that. writing. <laughs> Don't spit that. I didn't spill it. I can I can take a drink while I'm laughing. Uh huh. <laughs> it was a tiny sip, but it's okay. It's neat. Twenty bubble in the front of the mouth. <laughs> All right, your next choice, buddy. Mm. You don't want to talk anymore about the image? Um, no, the let's, let, let's go to your choice. Uh, I'm, so I'm, I, I want to hear your number one. <sighs> this one, in my opinion, is a little basic, but I have a great story about it and why it's such a good film, in my opinion. And it's Back to the Future, the very first one. Yeah. It's Back to the Future. Never even would have thought of Hughes Back to the Future. <laughs> And we've just been watching those movies a lot lately, too. We just watched, like, you know, fucking, like, the first, second, and third one recently. Or at least the third one. We just, yeah. I love how I've been going on this rant about time travel and how it's nonlinear and all this stuff. And my end, my, I just put that together. My own film is back, where they specifically go back in time. See? This is another one where they go back in time to specifically change a moment. Yep. Yeah. Watch 12 Monkeys. But it also <laughs> affects the future, though. Real quick, um, I love movies so much because I wasn't allowed to watch them a lot as a kid. I got to watch one movie a week on a Friday evening as long as the chores had been done by six. Um, and chores included, like, everybody's bathed and I have, you know, siblings. All of the dishes have been done and put away. Everybody's eaten. You know what I mean? So I remember vividly every single movie that I ever saw as a kid. And mm -hmm. I remember what happened. And um, my mom really didn't, um, she didn't really enjoy movies, but the two that she ever introduced me to were amazing. She introduced me to The Princess Bride, um, which I love right, that fucking if, movie. If, if she could have introduced me to any film, thank That's you like for the that. perfect rainy day movie. That one and Never Ending Story. Yeah. Oh my God. Jack Black. Never ending story. He's the bully in Jack Black. Or he's the bully. Blah, blah, blah. Jack Black is the Jack bully. Jack Black is the bully. Really? Yeah. Rewatch it. I need to rewatch re that it. shit. He's the That's bully fucking in it. crazy. It's like one of his first films. But Back to the Future is one of the other movies that she, like, she was like, I want to share this with my kids, right? And so we, Blockbuster and Hollywood Video were a thing, right? So uh, we went to Hollywood Video 
and we got back to the future and we all sat down and watched it together as a family and i have adhd right so it was tough for me to sit through films without wanting to get up and like you know interact yeah. with them and stuff this movie i sat there and i just like <sighs> i just took it all in i had something about it just like really drew me in and then Back to the Future 2, when she told us there was a second one, me and my brother, it blew our fucking minds. It was like, oh, that's amazing. And then the third one we wanted to go and get, and so we went to the movie store and we got the third one. And somebody had fucked up the cases, and they put the second one in the case of the third one. And so we had to wait two more weeks to watch the third one. Mm. And it was traumatizing. But the first <laughs> one... But the first one, the whole concept to me of, of just like being friends with your parents at a time in their lives that you can relate to yeah was really interesting because my I, my my parents are divorced right mm. so i remember watching that and being like man like i wonder i wonder if they would have been people who like i really could have gotten along and understood because they're so bitter and like angry now you know like i was young you were kind of wondering like where maybe like like they shifted yeah. over time or well, something and, like, like that like like my dad when he was a kid or if they shifted at yeah all. man it it caused a really weird like obviously it's a great it's a great film and it's tremendous entertainment but it caused this weird introspective shift where i was like dude what if I could go and fucking meet my folks at that time and just like be buds with them for a you minute. You know, that's that's so you to take Back to the Future that way. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that is so JJ. <laughs> you know? Like this is why I want to take you back to Vegas with me. Yeah. You know, like now that you know how to count cards a little. Right. Bit. Absolutely. We'll get that. We'll get that cash, bro. And, uh, Here's the cash thing. Cash money, baby. Here's the thing: is we have to spend a lot of it on water because the water in Vegas is disgusting. It's so terrible. And I hate that I. But Remember we utilized the fucking. Uh, remember we utilized the sink for the cooler yeah, though. We, we had the ice did. machine right there on we the fucking did. floor. That was so much fun. Cheers to that. Buddy. That was a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to my number one right now, yeah. and it's it's pretty basic, but honestly, like it's the ultimate stoner movie. And if you've never seen it, you really gotta watch it. Reefer Madness. Yeah. Like it is the one that created everything absolutely you know and the cool thing is it's in the public domain you can watch it on youtube mm -hmm. like you can watch it anywhere you want and it's really fucking easy to access and it's a really great movie if you've never watched it before yeah. because i mean it's it's so fun to watch when you're stoned because of what they were trying to portray weed to be at the time you know like 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 the guy playing the piano and he's like play faster play mm -hmm. faster <laughs> like and the chick or the, the chick playing the piano and she's got like the fucking like the joint in her mouth and she's all like Mm -hmm. <laughs> like fucking... they all look like they're on some kind of meth man like, i, I love it i love it they're they're all basically on speed yeah. you know yeah. and uh is and it's all like stems because like that's you know that was funded by william randolph hearst you know who was actually a paper guy mm -hmm. and they found out that hemp was going to replace paper and so he was like oh wait a minute i don't want that to fucking happen because mm -hmm. like before that happened william randolph hearst didn't fucking care about that at all no but uh no, all that story we're actually going to cover on our new podcast called can of crimes tune into that soon we're actually going to be dropping that relatively soon and uh, no just video so just a know. straight podcast yeah the, uh... but reefer madness is my one number one choice because me and uh jordan shout out to jordan stroy from high school we used to fucking get ripped and watch all those old b movies and sci-fi movies and we used to buy the collections of like like the, like the 10 to 15 different like sci-fi and shitty movies from like the 1940s and 50s and 60s that you could buy and we used to buy those collections and get ripped and watch them before school and by senior year, our first uh, writing class was actually Miss Poland's creative writing class. And we used to get lit before we used to go to creative writing. Of course. <laughs> like, we used to get so stoned because, like, we didn't start school until 1.30 in the afternoon, you know? And then because it was, like, we got third lunch and then it was third period. So, like, it was, like, we had just slipped in there in the afternoon, got real baked. And then sometimes we were still stoned and we went to blacksmith uh, genetics, genetics class. Nice. Yeah. And uh, for those that don't know, Ma, Milwaukee Academy of the Arts, was one of two schools in the entire like west coast of the western like like entire the west coast that had a genetics class there was another one there was one more oh we man. Were one of okay. two but like that guy gave us access to crazy shit like it was fucking awesome you... shout out to blacksmith shout I wanna, out to blacksmith i want to get out. so um we're about to sign off mm. one more thing and i get this from every single guest that i have yeah i need you to tell me about the first time you ever got stoned it's a good it's a good i think it's good so um I was quite a bit older when I started. I was like 19 or 20. Um, 
and I was over at my brother's and I had planned it, you know what I mean? I was like, yes, I'm going to do, I'm going to smoke the weed a little closer. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do it. And, uh, so I went over there and he just had like a little pipe and it took me like nine hits to actually fucking get stoned. You know, I, I don't know if Damn. anyone else, I don't know if anyone else had that problem, but I couldn't That's like a like, bowl and a half. It, <laughs> it, it, it was, it, it took, well, I mean, maybe for people like us, it took like, me like, like it took me like a minute. A hit. And, uh, it finally hit me and I was like, yes, I am hungry. I'm so <laughs> hungry. And he was, yeah, it was, in, in my life. it was immediate, man. And he was like, yes, me too. And so we go over to the fridge and, and he opens the fridge and it's short and he's very tall and I'm not. And, um, so he gets down like on his knees and he's like crawling into the fridge to like look for stuff, you know? And I'm kind of looking over his shoulder as best I can. And even though he's like on his knees, I'm like on my tiptoes, like what's in there, bro. You can, you know, you can see, you can see the things. And, um, he comes out of the fridge with like a can of salsa, just a regular ass can of like Tostino's or whatever the fuck salsa. And he pulls around and he goes, look, <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then laughed hysterically for like five minutes at a can of salsa and then ate it like the whole thing. That's yeah. amazing. And That's that, amazing. Yeah. Honestly, hands down, like one of the top stories that I've heard on the podcast. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> really. Like, Thanks, bro. And Shelby sat in for quite a few of them, actually. Yeah. Like, That's a pretty good I, one. I've actually pretty much ever since. I mean, you guys were the first ones that I ever started that with. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you guys were actually the very first ones yeah. that I ever started doing that, like, first time ever smoking with. So. Okay. That's amazing. That's Hell yeah. hands down one of the best stories I've ever heard. Thank Dope, you so dude. much for sharing that. Thank I you appreciate for having that. me on here, man. And, dude, and thank it. you so much for coming. Yeah, and absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Hippie Speedball Podcast. It is Joe, your host with the most Joe, <laughs> but not this time because it's St. Patty's Day. So I got enough whiskey because it's JJ. Yeah. Thanks again for Hard tuning in. And I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.